الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات تباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسيا وهو حسين ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين واعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وكنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسحقا لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير وأسروا قولكم أو جاروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور أأمنتم من في السماء أن يخسف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم أمنتم من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور أم من هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عطو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهداء من يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة 
قليلا ما تشكرون قل هو الذي ذراكم في الأرض وإليه تحشرون ويقولون متى إن كنتم صادقين قل إنما العلم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلما رأوا زلفة سيئة وجوه الذين كفروا وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم من أهلكني الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب أليم قل هو الرحمن آمنا به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين قل أرأيتم إن أصبح ماؤكم غورا فمن يأتيكم بماء معين صلى على محمد وآل محمد Inshallah, I'll be reciting Ziyarat Ali Yaseen. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahi Rahmanir Rahim Salamun Ala Ali Yaseen السلام عليك يا داعي الله ورباني آياته السلام عليك يا باب الله وديان دينه السلام عليك يا خليفة الله وناصر حقه السلام عليك يا حجة الله ودليل إرادته السلام عليك يا تالي كتاب الله وترجمانا السلام عليك في آناء ليلك وأطراف نهارك السلام عليك يا بقية الله في أرضه السلام عليك يا ميثاق الله الذي أخذه ووكد السلام عليك يا وعد الله الذي ضمنا السلام عليك أيها العلم المنصوب والعلم المصبوب والغوث والرحمة الواسعة وعدان غير مكذوب السلام عليك حين تكون السلام عليك حين تقعد السلام عليك حين تقرا وتبين السلام عليك حين تصلي وتكنوت السلام عليك حين تركع وتسجد السلام عليك حين تهلل وتكبر السلام عليك حين تحمد وتستغفر السلام عليك حين تصبح وتمسي السلام عليك في الليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى السلام عليك أيها الإمام المامون السلام عليك أيها قدم المامون السلام عليك بجوامع السلام أشهدك يا مولاي أني أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله
ورسوله لا حبيب إلا هو وأهله وأشهدك يا مولاي أن عليا أمير المؤمنين حجة والحسن حجة والحسين حجة وعلي بن الحسين حجة ومحمد بن علي حجة وجافر بن محمد حجة وموسى بن جافر حجة وعلي بن موسى حجة ومحمد بن علي حجة وعلي بن محمد حجة والحسن بن علي حجة وأشهد أنك حجة الله أنتم الأول والآخر وأن رجعتكم حق لا ريب فيها يوم لا ينفع نفسا إيمانها لم تكن آمنت من قبل أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا وأن الموت حق وأن ناكرا ونكيرا حق وأشهد أن النشر حق والبعث حق وأن الصراط حق والمرصاد حق والميزان حق والحشر حق والحساب حق والجنة والنار حق والواد والوعيد بهما حق يا مولاي شقيا من خالفكم وسعد من أطاعكم فأشهد على ما أشهدتك عليه وأنا ولي لك بريء من عدوك فالحق ما رضيتم والباطل ما استخدم والمعروف ما أمرتم به والمنكر والمنكر ما نهيتم عنه فنفسي مؤمنة بالله وحده لا شريك له وبرسوله وبأمير المؤمنين وبكم يا مولاي أولكم وآخركم ونصرتي معدة لكم ومودتي خالصة لكم آمين آمين صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Imam Hussain Islamic Center and as always it's an honor, a privilege and a pleasure to host you here this evening and thank you everybody for joining us Inshallah together we offer our condolences to the 12th Holy Imam and all of the Masumin on the, on the sad anniversary of the Shahadat of Imam Jafar Sadiq and also tonight we're also remembering the destruction of uh, Jannatul Baqi which happened uh, early last century. We offer our condolences with the warmest of our salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Inshallah, there's a few quick announcements and thank you, Brother Ali Mohi, for the beautiful recitation. As always, you do a fantastic job and it's always greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Inshallah, a few quick announcements and then we'll get into the main speech with Sheikh Muhammad Mahdi, followed by uh, Majlis and some uh, short latam and sinazani, and we'll have some refreshments after that. 
uh, first of all, children. Uh, we have um, our weekly programs such as Dua uh, Tawassal on Tuesday nights and Dua Komail on Thursday nights, of course. Uh, you're welcome to join in person. We've, um, in order, so that we can help encourage people actually get together for the Dua, there's a couple of programs that are linked with it, especially for Dua Komail. One of them is that if you have any marhumin who you would like to have blessed by this Dua or the receive the reward of this Dua, Please contact us. We can have the dua. Uh, we can have their names specially mentioned to receive the reward of the dua. And inshallah, we all receive that reward. Uh, but it, and that is also a way for you and your families to also inshallah attend the center as well for that for that dua as well. Not just to uh, have your um, departed beloved. Uh, people's names remembered, but also for you to attend with your families. For example, if you have uh, the passing away anniversary of your grandparents or parents or cousin or, uh, God forbid, your, your children uh, coming up, um, you can mention that to us. We will, inshallah, mention their names. And it's an opportunity for you to bring your family here and your friends here to also be part of that program as well, inshallah. So please do take advantage of that. There is, uh, there is uh, as if you've seen the poster that we've, uh, that we've, put uh, out, there, uh, there is nothing like doing dua for those who have passed away. They themselves cannot reach up their hands to ask for forgiveness and mercy. It is up to us to do that on their behalf and to remember them and to support them and help them in whatever way we can because that is now beyond them. And one day, that will be us. We won't be able to do that and we will rely on those who are still here to do that for us, inshallah. So please do take advantage of that. If you have any questions, if you if you need any clarifications, anything at all, please come and see myself or any of the other volunteers here. Inshallah, we're happy to assist you and uh, provide that information. Uh, next, um, we have a poster that is being issued, I think, this week that will spell out all of the upcoming events and the programs for from now until the month of Muharram, inshallah. So about the next eight, nine weeks roughly because Muharram is coming very, very quickly and so is uh, uh, Hajj and Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Habir and Mubahila and everything and so on and so on. So uh, time is moving very quickly. It's already been a month since we had uh, Eid al-Fitr, believe it or not. Uh, and so uh, Shahi Ramadan is only 10 months away. Just thought I'd mention that to you as well. So. Time is going very quickly. Take advantage of it. That poster will be up and available um, in the next round of uh, in the next round of updates. But if you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact us. We're more than happy to help. Uh, you can find all of this information on the website, email, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. I think I've got everything, and of course, any one of us as well. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately for everybody. Uh, two last things. First of all, if you would like to sponsor any of the events at Imam Hussain Islamic Center, inshallah, it is a, it is a form of sadaqa to be able to help the center in running these events. And that means in any way at all, whether that is to help with the food, sometimes we have prizes, sometimes we have gifts, gifts for children, and so many other ways of contributing. You can also contribute with your time and effort as well. Whatever you can help with, the center is more than happy, very pleased to have you and your efforts and your contribution. Please, again, see any one of the volunteers and we can help you with that. The very last announcement before I invite Sheikh, inshallah, is that unfortunately you are stuck with me as your MC for the next few programs. So with your best of salawat, inshallah, we find an even better MC who can replace me. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Well, it doesn't sound like you want a better MC, so you are stuck with me. Good luck to you all. Um, a little bit of brevity on a Friday night. I know it's been a long week for everyone. Uh, last but not least, we have a very small, very quick presentation by one of our hard workers from who hides in the background and does a lot of work in the background. And sincerely, from my heart, I really appreciate the effort that he makes and the help that he provides. Uh, Brother Khalid will have a brief presentation. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Brother Khalid. Uh, we no doubt have been in COVID lockdown for the last two and a half years. One of the things we've lost is our exercise and our passion to, you know, play together, train together. So inshallah, to, in the spirit of reviving um, our physical activity, our fitness, um, we want to hopefully get expressions of interest to see who out there is interested. We've had uh, Brother Hassan Dusti, he's a judo master, he's been teaching judo for the last couple of years. We have a gym at the back and uh, I think he's been training Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, inshallah, these numbers have been dropping. We hope to get these numbers back up. And to make this more interesting, inshallah, this year, I hope to, to you know, volunteer some of my time into also teaching a, an art called Wing Chun um, or Kung Fu, which is concepts of Tai Chi, Wing Chun, close by, and, and it's similar to Judo because they're both close contact. So inshallah, we hope to have Uh, no age limit. I mean, with the age limit, I want to say no age limit. I mean, probably age 10 and upwards, preferably. Uh, but inshallah, if we can have, you know, people training in pairs, that's both required for judo and, and Wing Chun, we can definitely sort of get that, that motivation, that spirit to come back, to train, to do exercise. We can hold it after the programs. So inshallah, I invite everyone. At the moment, it's for, for gents, not for ladies, only because of the contact issue. But inshallah, uh, I hope to invite everyone if they have kids, if they have.
الإمام جعفر بن محمد الصادق صلوات الله وسلامه عليهما What's the purpose of this? We're going to look at a hadith and then we'll delve into the life of the Imam. And that hadith is a hadith that's oft repeated. <coughs> Did you hear it so often between people discuss this hadith? And this hadith is mentioned by all the schools of thought. I'm certain many of you have heard this hadith over a dozen times at least, if not over hundreds of times. But for those that it strikes them for the first time, then they may be excused. Maybe they never walked into the room at the right time. And that hadith is an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that says man mata la ya'arif imama or lam ya'arif in another version imama zamani ma tamitata al-jahiliyya or ma tamitata al-jahiliyya that whoever dies and does not know the imam of his time now the hadith does not know the imam dies the death of ignorance or the age of ignorance <sighs> right now you could say we're living in a mini jahiliya and when you, you might say hold on mini or the world's it's worst it can be now believe me you haven't studied Islamic history or history in general. We're still in a golden era, believe it or not. That's how bad times have passed. Even we're probably in the worst time in the 21st century. 21st century's last 22 years. This is the worst era we've had in the last 22 years. But before that, you know, those that lived during World War I, those that lived during the Spanish flu, they killed 200 million people, not child's play like this one. Those that lived during the Great Depression, those that lived during World War II, they saw things we didn't see. Those that even lived during the Cold War, which was a terrifying time, especially for people... <coughs> Because it was a time where people believed things quicker. But now we are in a jahiliya. In fact, I, w I was telling someone two days ago, I said, you know, five years ago, the dunya still had some power. I go, it's got no power now. It doesn't entice anymore. You notice? Last three years, it doesn't entice you anymore. Nothing special about living anymore. Everything's just, ever since that yes vote, everything just went downhill. Now, and I want to be politically correct because it's a fact. Ever since the people stood forth and said to God, we're going to go against your greatest institution, which is marriage, and we're going to give it to anybody that wants to do it. So to counter this ignorance we're in, we need to know our imam. Okay. Firstly, Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. First question we ask, who is the Imam that we need to know? Who is the Imam that as a result, ignorance dies? Number two is what is ma'rifah? When we say ma'mata wa lam ya'rif, what is when I say ma'rifah to know or the gnosis of this? What is ma'rifah? Is the second question. Should I be worried? Yes, I should. Why should I be worried? Because the hadith says the death of ignorance is not a death of being misinformed. You know, when we hear the word jahl, what does it mean? Jahl means ignorance, and someone doesn't know. A man comes up to Imam al Sadiq. He says, Ya Aba Abdullah, Rasulullah has said, 
whoever dies and does not know the imam of his time dies the death of jahiliya of the ignorance or the age of ignorance so the man says to him jahiliyatu jahala he says to him ja he says to him jahiliyatu jahala is this a <coughs> a death of not knowing or ignorance in the sense that you know i just didn't know or does he he says aw jahiliya la ya'rifu imama imama is a jahiliya of ignorance or jahiliya just specifically limited to the imam that this person is a person that is knowledgeable his only issue is he doesn't know the imam the imam says three things that break the back you think about what the imam is saying he he says to him jahiliyata kufrin wa nifaqin wa dalal if i don't know my imam i will die the death of an unbeliever the death of a hypocrite the death of a deviant three things is it an important subject of course it's an important subject it's a difference between heaven and hell that i know my imam so the question arises who is this imam that if i know <clears throat> who is this imam if i know him that i do not die the death of ignorance I'll, I'll give you the first answer. I was once in Saudi Arabia. I was in Mecca al-Mukarrami. This is back in the days before we had smartphones. Back in the days where we were walking around Saudi Arabia and no one had a phone. And there were mobile phones, but you didn't take your phone overseas. That was a new thing. People started thinking it was about 2003, 2004, where people actually started taking their phones with them overseas, generally. and then it became a big thing after that so i had a camera if one used to get your digital camera and i was taking photos at sadd haram and a man came up to me one of the guards and said you can't do this you know and then he i said why he said the prophet says that taswir is haram i said did the prophet have a kodak moment or something no What do you mean did the prophet say that you cannot take photographs? He says that's what the prophet said. I said okay. So I pulled out a reel from my pocket and I said whose face is on this reel? Is this not a photo? And he said this is the king. I said so the king is exempt from the prophet's camera rules that you have said exist. and he says the king is what he says ul al amr is in charge of our authorities and we are abd ma'mur i am supposed to be a servant that's i'm his what i've got to be his i'm got to be subservient to him i go i'm his subordinate i got to do what he says that's what his answer was so is it the ruler is it the ruler that we are supposed to follow firstly if we say it is the ruler and and and, and the conversation went longer than that so i said to him in, in in my country if i go back i told him to australia at the time john howard was prime minister i said is john howard my wali amr he said yes So now I'm here to declare that Anthony Albanese is now your wali al-amr you have to give him bay. <clears throat> According to our friend the friendly anti-camera chap you know Ansel Adams will be rolling in his grave seeing this guy cuz this guy's against photography. Wouldn't let you take a photo outside the shrine or outside the masjid al-haram. Secondly the first point is there's no evidence to support this whatsoever the second issue we have here 
is the leaders themselves negate this. Muawiyah never said, I am the imam that's mentioned in this hadith. They none of them did. Not one of the rulers said, the imam that's mentioned in this hadith is me. They didn't do this. You know, there's those people that support the cause more than the actual person. You know, like the Christians worshipped Christ and Christ denied his divinity. Or the Wahhabis that venerate Muawiyah and Yazid. And Yazid's like an elbow bender. Everyone knows Yazid is shrugging down the beers. He was very fond of beer. And they still tell you, listen, Yazid is Amir al Mu'minin. Yazid, listen, I'm a drunkard. What more do you want? I'm showing you it's public. But they'll venerate him. Or you got these people, they champion the cause, they, they follow the cause more than the actual person. You ever met male feminists? You know, they're, they're more for feminism than the actual women. Women look and say, listen, you know, settle down. They'll fight the cause and they'll work upon this cause stronger than the other, than the claimant does anyway. The second opinion of who the imam might be is the scholar of the time, the ulama. <clears throat> and this happens all the time. I remember once one of the ulama, someone came up to him and said to him, you are Imam al-Mahdi. And the alim looked at him and he said, Boro Gramshu. Basically he told him to go to hell, to go away. And then the person looked at him and said, oh, he said, would the imam swear at you? He said, no. He said, see, I'm not the imam. <laughs> Once another alim, someone said to him, you are the imam. He said to him, I was raised in this village. Go ask. Everyone knows my parents. The imam is someone whose parents are unknown because his parents are imam al-askari alayhi salam and sayyid al They've passed from the earth. It's not someone that's around. So people have this position. And the scholars themselves do not assume this position. I've never seen a scholar that says, don't have a scholar, not someone that dresses as a scholar. An actual scholar that claims to be in that position. Sometimes people will try and elevate scholars higher than the station of prophets. You know, they'll tell you if this man... One man once said, he said to me, if God did not, forget the prophets, he said, if God does not exist, I would worship this politician. You know? I said, what are you saying? He said, yes, when the police came to prevent me from building my home, this politician was the one that gave me a paper in order to be able to continue building. So I said, if you got a paper to continue building, you're willing to worship him. You know, imagine someone that gives you a house for free. Like I was thinking, if I was a billionaire, I could make this guy worship me. I'd say, he's a second house, and now I'm your God. Do my bidding. Like, seriously, where did these people come up with these ideas? <coughs> <coughs> Don't worry. I've only got a symptom of coughing, so that's it. <coughs> Nothing else. But anyway, the third ability, Salah ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The third possibility, and the only possibility, is that the Imam must be someone that's divinely appointed. That Allah Azza wa Jal Himself has appointed this the Imam. Why? Allah mentioned this mentions this over and over again in the Quran. You know what we're going to do, taqlid, for example? Some ulama will tell you of the conditions of taqlid, you have to do taqlid of the a'lam, the most qualified or the most knowledgeable. Now, they know that no one can ever know who's the most knowledgeable unless they themselves are the most knowledgeable. It's impossible. You have to be a master to know between your students who's the best. If you're a student, we're all students, you can't determine. <clears throat> so they give you a, a system to use to know who the alam is. However, the fuqaha will tend to tell you to do ahtiyar. 
push towards ihtiyat, practice precaution. But with the divinely appointed, appointed Imam, there is no precaution. Allah says in the Quran, Sirata al-ladina an'amta alayhim. The ones that Allah, the path of the ones, Allah has placed all his blessings, all his bounties. The guidance of Allah is with them. They are so well guided that even if I was to move away from them a fraction, I've deviated from Allah. These are the divinely important um, appointed imams. Now, <coughs> tonight is the night of the sixth imam. So let's look into his life to have a bit of understanding. Ma'arif. So what is Ma'arif? To know who this imam is. You know, when you sit there and you ask someone about a sports star or a musician or an actor, Someone will come up to ask you a question and they'll say, oh, do you know Keanu Reeves was born in Lebanon? People love to say that. They'll come up and say that and you go, well, where was Jafar ibn Muhammad born? And everyone gets stunned. Where is this Imam born? What do you know about his life? Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. What do I know about his life? He's, this is one part of his ma'arif. Knowing him and knowing about him. The second is to know their position, their station. Their status with Allah azza wa jal. The imam that we are commemorating tonight had the longest life of any imam that passed. And we don't include Imam Mahdi because he's still alive. Imam al-Sadiq, they say, was born between 80 to 83 after Hijra. Generally, 83 is what they stand with. And he was martyred 148 after Hijra. Okay? So he lived for 65 years at the least. That was longer than any other imam's lives. <coughs> In his lifetime... He lived for 12 years with his grandfather, Ali ibn al Hussein, Zayn al Abidin, alayhi salam, during his imamat. He lived 31 years, of which 19 years were the imamat of his father, Al Imam Muhammad al Baqir. And then for himself, he was imam for 34 years. Now, what do I know about his life? <coughs> we know, just let's look at this on a scale. You know, Imam Hussein alayhi salam came at the time of the rise of Banu Umayyah. You had Muawiyah, he led to the rise, Yazid. But they were still rising. Remember, Banu, the family of Abu Sufyan fell after the disgrace of Yazid. But Banu Umayyah themselves were on the rise and they actually reached their peak during the time of the fifth Imam, Imam al -Baqir. It was the golden age for Banu Umayyah. Then their decline began all the way to the time of Imam al-Sadiq. Imam al-Sadiq's time was a time where there was a power shift. You know, you have one dynasty come, uh, we, we get something small. We, we see liberal government, labor government. But it's the same, you know. They just pretty much, they're playing like, they're both playing the same game. They just change uniforms. That's it. With these dynasties, it's the same. They both want to, it's just pretty much you. you. The wolf stops governing you and you. The next you get the lion. Whoever it is wants to devour you. <coughs> Banu Umayyah came to a decline and when a force falls, a ruling body falls, there is a vacuum at the moment. And during that vacuum, what happens? Everyone locks themselves indoors. Do you know why? 
because the streets become lawless. I don't know if you remember during the Arab Spring, if anyone remembers how Iraq was after the fall of Saddam, before they made the puppet government, just that period of time, you know, it was a free-for-all. It was to the point that you could kill and get away with it. It was that bad. But during that time, people have liberties because there's no more ruler above. And during that time, Imam al-Sadiq took advantage of teaching the real teachings of Islam. So when they call us, what do they call us? They call you Ja'fari. Because most of the narrations we have are from which Imam? <coughs> you know, when there's a joke, they say when someone asks you for a verse, Astaghfirullah, and don't ever do this. But they say if someone asks you where's this verse, you say Surah Al Baqarah. Because by the time they find it, you would have been out of there. And if they ask you who said this hadith, you say Qala Sadiq. By the time they find out that it's not, you're out of there. This is what I'm saying. Imam al Sadiq, the majority of the hadith come from Imam al Sadiq was at the time that he was around. The rulers, although he was able to establish the foundations of his teachings and built the ide ideology, and we are indebted to this, okay? The rulers at that time had scholars around them that what? They had scholars around them that they'd pay and they'd give them a fatwa. You know, could you make this halal? You know, the British, a lot of the nursery rhymes, there's a history to them. You know, that <coughs> if anyone, we don't study. This is, if you live in England, you probably study Tudor, Tudor House, which is the house of King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII was someone that was polygamous, married one wife, his first wife, he wanted to get rid of her. He wanted to divorce her, but because they were still under the Catholic Church, they prevented him from getting a divorce. So he got the cardinal at the time to talk to the Pope. They made a joke of it. You know which nursery rhyme they made from that? Old Mother Hubbard. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. When she got there, the, the cupboard was bare. And her poor dog got none. And that doesn't rhyme. But the dog was meant to be King Henry VIII. And the cardinal went to the cupboard, which was the Vatican, to get a fatwa that would allow King Henry VIII to get divorced. But with the Catholic Church, there's no divorce. So then King Henry VIII was able to get his own scholars, ones that would give fatwas for things. You pay them, you know, they'll say, yes, we will make this halal, you know. You can eat, drink wine at this time of the year, or whatever, one, something like that. So they allowed him to get divorced. <clears throat> these kulafa, these kings, they had these scholars, they pay to give fatwa for them. And they would make the rulings. By the time the Abbasid system began, and the first Abbasid king was named, his name was Abu al-Abbas, because they came where the where Sayyids, were the children of Banu Hashim, were the sons of Abbas, the son of Abdul Muttalib. The first one, you know what his moniker was? Do you know what his nickname was? Abu al-Abbas was called as safah Imagine that was your moniker. as safah means the bloodthirsty. That was his nickname. They called him Abu al Abbas al Safah. He was bloodthirsty. He was a murderer that no one had seen the like of. <clears throat> During his time, it was so scary. He lived in this place called Al Hira, which was on the edge of Kufa. During his rule, the Muslims, because there was, this is what Imam had already taught, but then the Muslims entered the state of fear. The one man even came next to Imam al Sadiq to ask him a question about a woman's monthly cycle. 
Something that simple. The narration, you know what it says? The Imam looked right, and then he looked left, and then he responded. The look of anyone was watching. A question on fiqh. Even then, the Imam did not to respond. They would move the Imam from place to place. The Imam was in the city of his grandfather, Rasulullah Medina. They'd move him from region <coughs> to region. Anyone got close to the Imam was persecuted, prosecuted, and in some cases, killed. One man, and these are narrations that we get, and when you read a narration, it teaches you a lot. It's good to read narrations, to analyze the narration. You know how we do tadabbur with the Quran? It's good for you to do tadabbur with the ruwai. A man was married, and he said to his wife, I divorce you. Three times I've divorced you. And then he didn't know what to do. So he went and asked the scholar of the region. He said that I've divorced my wife with three. They told him your divorce is not acceptable. <coughs> so he came back. And he said to his wife, they said, my divorce isn't acceptable. The first thing we learn from this part of the Ruwaya is what? Narration is they were ulama at the time of the imam. So you know what, some of these are anti-taqlid people. They tell you, oh, there's no taqlid, taqlid is false. If it was false, the imam would have not let any ulama go out and teach people religion. It was a listen, they have to come back to us. You shouldn't be teaching them. The ones that are against, you have seen those people, they're anti ulama You can't follow alim, you got to learn the religion. From yourself, go pick leaves from the tree and read it. I don't know how they get their religion. How do they get the understanding? You know, one of the when I used to listen to these people, I say, look, if your car breaks down, what do you do? You can't take it to someone that understands cars because that's the khlit. You know, you're following someone's opinion. If you can't, your heart fails, you can't go see a cardiologist because that's also the khlit. The way that you're looking at it, you're asking the opinion of an expert and that's haram according to you. So just sit at home and don't listen and don't read anything because you shouldn't be doing this because it's wrong. So when he returned to his wife and he said to his wife the story, uh, what the alim had told him, she said, I won't accept and unless I hear it from Abu Abdullah. I want to hear it from Imam al -Safi. <coughs> So he had to go to al hira because by that time, Al Abu al-Abbas, al saffah had bought Imam al-Sadiq there. When he arrived, the law was anyone caught talking to the Imam would be arrested. So he looked around, he said, how am I going to go up to the Imam's house and approach him? While he was there, he saw a cucumber salesman. Someone said, you know, when people come in, they bring a cart. You've been overseas, you see the cart's called vegetables or fruit and they sell so he came up and said to him all right the whole tray you've got how much for everything you've got so he said one dirham you know you think about how expensive things have become sweet he bought all the cucumbers for one dirham one dirham you know what one dirham is a silver coin you want perspective what he was paying was less than ten dollars for all the cucumbers all of them. Now go get a kilo of cucumbers. Just to give you perspective. When you read the hadith, it has all these things for me to look at and analyze. So then he said to him, I'll buy all of them. He said, can you give me? He said he was wearing, he was wearing uh, a jubba made of wool. He said, give me your coat as well. So he took the coat, he took the tray, and he said, cucumbers for sale. Went to the imam's door. The servant of the imam came in. He said, you know, would your master want some cucumbers? And the imam called him and said, what's your question? And the imam before this, he says, I like, he says to him, he says, I like what you're doing. That trick you've done, that you don't get caught, it's a good thing. Get away. That's the only way for him to ask the imam. So then the imam tells him that your wife, she's not divorced, and he leaves. Take a look at this. 
Imagine I have to tr- for ask a question. Billahi, people today, they can ask questions and get answers and they don't do it. It's at the tip of your fingers now. You can read Rawayat. You can listen to Hadith Ahl al Back then, this is how hard it was. And even the persecution towards the Imam, be Abi Huwa wa Ummi. You know, the Imam himself. You know, when we have um, uh, Allahumma Salaam Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, there's, there's a hadith. I actually want to read the actual hadith. <clears throat> the Imam in this hadith says himself, he's telling the hadith. Imam al Sadiq is the one that says this hadith. It's narrated, but he's the one speaking. He says, دخلت على أبي العباس بالحيرة. doesn't say whether that was forceful, but from the way the narration is mentioned, it was forceful. He's brought towards Abu al-Abbas al-Saffah. In al-Hira, where he lives. He said, فقال يا أبا عبد الله ما تقول في الصيام اليوم he said, oh, Abu Abdullah, what do you say about today? Is it fasting today? Or, you know, are we fasting? So apparently he's talking about the last day of Shah Ramadan or the day of Eid, which we always have a nice discussion about because everyone's a faqih these days. Everyone is a jurist. Everyone wants to teach other people their religion. If there's a taklif upon you, it's not upon the whole world. If your marja says to you today, it's Eid, it's upon you. You don't announce to go, but you know, everyone becomes a selenologist these days. Selenology is the people that study lunar science. They're, cosmo- they're astrophysicists that specialize in the study of the moon. Everyone becomes, ah, oh, that looks like a three day moon. You know, and the only three day moon he's seen is probably at a football game or something, and I don't want to dwell into that. So this guy is trying to tell you, okay? That he understands the moon. You do the taqlid that you understand. That you've been given. That's what you do. Other than that, don't give me your opinion. The imam is asked, what do you think of the siyam? The imam turns around and says, Dalika ila al-imam. Listen to the answer. He said, the question is for the imam. What the Imam is saying is true. It's for me, Yani, the question. But what Abu Abbas Safa understands, it's for him. Because the Imam will not dare respond. These were tyrants. Do you imagine that, like today, how many things, like we're in cancel culture right now, but you pretty much still can say what you want. You know, you'll just get your Facebook banned or whatever. You make a comment, they'll close it. Isn't that right? That's all that happens. But back then, if you couldn't even ask, about divorce or monthly cycle, you couldn't even give an opinion. Imagine trying to give opinion in front of the, the king. <coughs> so the Imam says, ذَاكَ إِلَى الْإِمَامِ إِنْ سُمْتَ سُمْنَا وَإِنْ أَفْتَرْتَ أَفْتَرْنَا He says to him, if you fast, we fast. If you say today is eight, then we say today is eight. فَقَالَ يَا غُلَامِ so Abu Abbas Safah called his young slave. He said, Ya Ghulam, Aliya bil ma'ida. So he said, Put the banquet. They put a banquet for everyone to eat. The Imam says, Fa akal tu ma'hu wa ana a'lamu wallah annahu yawmun min shahri Ramadan. He said, I ate with Abu. Imagine this dhulam. Imagine this oppression. He said, I ate with Abu Abbas on the banquet and by God I knew it was Shah Ramadan. I ate in the day while I knew it was Shah Ramadan. Then he says, فَكَانَ إِفْطَارِ يَوْمًا وَقَضَاهُ أَيْسَرَ عَلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ يُضْرَبَ عُنُقِي وَلَا يَعْبَدَ اللَّهِ For me to break my fast on this day and do qadha for this day was easier than what? He's saying, what is the opposite of this? Then my neck to be struck, I would have been killed, and God would not have been worshipped. And sometimes people question, why I'm reading the hadith. 
they were questioning Ara, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Why didn't, why was he, his house was attacked, why didn't he, why didn't you do that, why doesn't he do, and everyone's an analyst, an, 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 an analyst, why did Imam al-Sadiq, why did Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam bring his family, why this, everyone has an opinion. The Imams did what was important for the religion to remain. If they did not do this, you would not worship God. Am I guessing this is a fact? I'm not guessing this is a fact. Had the Imam said today is Shah Ramadan and the Imam was killed on that day, Allah would not have been worshipped because the Imam says this. Allah would not have been worshipped. That's what I need to understand. Okay, the next point. <clears throat> How do we let people know? How do we let people know about the Imam, Imam al Sadiq? I'm not talking about the Shia. The Shia are giving you a basic understanding of what you, yeah, honestly, with every Imam, you can sit here for ages going through the discussion of what the Imam is and who his life and, and bits about it. I'm giving you bits about his life. Jurisprudentially, did you know how many schools are the, we have with the Ja'fari school? The other Muslim schools, what are they called? Do you know them? Who knows the other schools? Hanafi? Who knows another one? Maliki? Hanbali? One more. Shafi'i. Do you know who they are? The first one, Hanafi, Abu Hanifa, and Nu'man. Who was he and what era did he live in? He is the main teacher of all the schools. Did you know that? He's the one the Sunni scholars look at the most. He was the student of Imam al-Sadiq. Did you know that? But obviously, he studied with him. You know, you see these guys. They go to Hausa. They study, then they leave Hausa. They open their own television station. And they start talking against the ulama. You see how many of them have you seen? Too many of them. They sit there. And they start singing whatever opinion they have and they start to smash the fuqaha. You know? They learnt in the hausa, but then they chose what they were going to do with their powers. You know? They learned the ways of the Jedi and they became a Sith. Pretty much. You know? They just went haywire. They went to the other side. You know what he says, Abu Hanifa? He says, لولا السنتان لهلك النعمان This is not in our books. You won't find it in our books. This is in their books. He says, if it wasn't for the two years that I studied the Muhammad Sadiq, he said, النعمان, Abu Hanifa would have perished. That's what he says about this. Imam Malik, the Imam, obviously, was the student of Nu'man. Do you know that? And no, Malik was a student of Abu Hanifa. Imam al-Shafi'i was a student of Malik. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was a student of al-Shafi'i. So let's look at it in reverse order. Al-Hanbali, Imam of the Hanabila, was the student of al-Shafi'i, who was the student of al-Maliki, who was the student of Abu Hanifa, who was the student of Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al-Sadiq. This is a fact. They all know this. And it's not something that if you say to them, they'll I'll give you, no, no, this is a fact. So jurisprudentially, you tell them all your jurisprudence is indebted to Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al-Sadiq. So that jurisprudentially, this is how I can bring it to the world. What about his scholarly ability? I'm not talking about Islamic. I'm talking about when they talk about um, Jabir and Hayyan, okay, or, or, or Gerba, or Jerba, as they call him, the Westerners. The Westerners tend to destroy him. They really put him down, even though he was a master in so many fields. And he was someone that actually understood alchemy, which a lot of the ulama of the past, the chemists of the past, 
were lost in this. They did not have, uh, uh, they did not have the understanding of it, and they did not know anything about alchemy. Alchemy is basically the ability to do what? The ability of alchemy is to be able to turn a metal by pouring an elixir, no? a potion. On the metal, you turn that metal into gold. This is something that he understood. But furthermore, obviously a lot of the things that were discovered were not only stolen from the imams, but even today they're stolen from the people that discovered them. You know, at school they always told you Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. And then you find out right later, later that was Mayuchi that actually invented the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell patented the telephone. Someone else invented it, but they took it. But before that, at a time, do you know there was a time where we had no understanding of chemistry whatsoever? We used to refer to the air as what? Hawa. That the air was a what? The air was considered to be an elementary substance. Two people at this time, this was during the time of the French Revolution. There was Joseph Priestley, who was from Birmingham in England. And they were in the 18th century. The other one was the father of chemistry, Anthony. In the chemist in the room, uh, starts with an L, his surname. Father of chem modern chemistry. No chemists in the room, all right. He was the French counterpart, and they were both at the same time the ones to discover that the air was not an elementary substance. It was actually a composition. The French chemist, the father of modern chemistry, I, all I remember is he was killed by guillotine during the French Revolution. But this guy actually called it... Um, uh, he called it acid something. He called ox he called oxygen. He called it uh, acid something. I don't know if it was the second word, but but he called it a, a form of acid. But and that that that's the word what oxygen means. And that's how they got the word. So he knew there was a composition in the air. The thing is, everyone thought this was a discovery of the eighteenth century. However, if you research the history of Imam al-Sadiq Islam, he's the first person to say that the air is a composition. How long ago? Not in the 18th century. 1,000 years before the 18th century. In fact, you'll find, if you research, there's an actual book, I've got the title for the book. Um, uh, I've actually written it. It's Acid Maker. Oxygen means acid maker. Okay. This is the excerpt from the book that it talks about. It's called Al Imam al Sadiq. Kama Arifa Ulama Arafuhu Afwan Arafuhu Ulama Arafuhu Ulama Al Gharb. This was an admission made by Western scholars in, in France in 1968, and this journal was published in 1970 in French. It was translated to Persian, eventually translated to Arabic. So if you want to get it, you can get it as a PDF in in Arabic and Persian. I haven't seen a form of it in English. You have it in English? See, Abid Ali, mate. See, thanks to him, we have it in English. In it, he says, فَلَا بُدْ إِذَنْ مِنَ الْإِعْتِرَافِ This is what the author is saying. Not of a follow of Ahl al he says, فَلَا بُدْ إِذَنْ مِنَ الْإِعْتِرَافِ بِأَنَّ جَعْفَرَ الصَّادِقِ He doesn't say alayhi salam. Because that's his title he's known by. بِذِهَابِهِ إِلَىٰ أَنَّ الْهَوَاءِ مُرَكَّبْ مِنْ عَنَاصِرْ مُخْتَلِفَةً قَدْ سَبَقَ عَصْرِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْإِكْتِشَافَاتَ الْحَدِيثَةَ بِأَلْفِ سَنَةً 
He said, without a doubt, this is the author of the book. He says, without a doubt, that he had discovered that the air was a composition a thousand years before. He says, when the Shia, and the Shia say, أن جعفر الصادق كان يعلم المجهول ويكشف أسرار بقوة الإمامة. That the Shia say that he knew the unknown and he used to do this with the strength of Imama. But didn't you know what he says? If you read the rest of it, it's it's after admitting to this, he goes, yeah, but he didn't discover this composition and that composition. And he, he admits to one thing and then he negates the rest. The problem is what we have with us is what's left over of the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. There are a, lot, a lot of books have been destroyed. A lot of things aren't uh, in our hands any longer. Even when we do uh, Maqtal Ibn Meknaf for Imam Hussein, the, the actual massacre of Imam Hussein, we don't take, we don't even have Maqtal Ibn Meknaf. It doesn't even exist anymore. It was destroyed. We get the story from a tabari who takes from Maqtal Ibn Meknaf. That's how hard it is to get access. And then you get people get up and start negating every story they hear in Karbala. So anyway, besides this, and these are things for you to sit and research. The Imam discussing oxygen. The Imam discussing the actual, Imam Sadiq is the first one to speak of the earth orbiting the sun. Did you know that? The Imam is the first one to speak about gravity. These are things for you to sit and research. To sit there and research because you, we're not, you know, we're not children anymore. Like you know, I, I, I remember when I was telling my 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 daughter's teacher, I said, I don't want you to teach my kids about how Captain James Cook was a hero. He was a villain. He was a tyrant. He was a usurper. And he was an occupier and a murderer. And he got his just desserts. So don't teach my kids what used to garbage used to fill our heads with. Teach them the truth. This is a fact. All the stuff you get taught and they make it into as if this person's a hero. Who were the real teachers? This Another, another thing, the imams would talk about the transmission of infections. Because we used to speak that they would be transmitted through the air. The Imam says even through light, and he doesn't mean light that we're looking at here. I don't know if exactly, because I'm trying to translate the, the Arabic into English. He says through adult. Because our understanding of light is what? The thing that we switch and comes on. That's all. But what it means, I don't know exactly, because the way light travels, and that's another discussion altogether that we, we honestly up till today baffles the mind. Scientists don't even know. How light travels. In what direction? We just assume it travels from point A to point B. That's it. We assume that. No one can really know something that's moving at 380,000 kilometers per second, how it's actually moving. It's, it's impossible. So anyway, but Imam would mention this. In fact, Jabir ibn Hayyan would talk about, inshallah, would we'll talk about all these uh, studies. You talk about pharmacology, zoology, botany. All this was from the sixth Ali Imam. Finally, I want to give you how we can teach the people about socially. This is important, the world we're living in today. And I'm going to round up here and inshallah leave the da to our dear brother who's been waiting for me. So you can read the measures. Please excuse me with, with the time. I've been up here for 50 minutes. Just excuse me for this, but I have to finish what I'm saying. That the Imam calls his servant in this hadith. He says, he says, قَالَ لِي أَبُوْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ قَالَ لِي أَبُوْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ قَدْ تَزَيَّدَ السِّعْرُ بِالْمَدِينَةِ وَقَدْ تَزَيَّدَ السِّعْرُ بِالْمَدِينَةِ he said, have you noticed prices are increasing in the city? You know, when you go in the stores, start selling things more expensive, 
things are starting to get more. Look at, take for example now, what, what's happening now. Cars are being sold for more money. If you go to the Middle East, food and all that has raised in price. So the Imam said, says to him, he says, he says, How much food do we have? You know, because in those days, what did you do? You used to, we didn't have, per- had real food. Didn't have perishable food. We didn't have food that, um, the, you know, quick fix food. You didn't get macaroni and cheese in a box and just throw it in the microwave. You had food. So you'd store your zet, your oils, your olives, so all this stuff, you'd have them in storage. And you would store for the season because in winter we didn't really work. Everyone stayed at home and got warm. Now we're out here in winter, you know, we're all around. <coughs> so in that time, people would store for the year. You would store your food supplies. So the imam says, how much do we have? And then the servant says, عَنْدَنَا مَا يَكْفِيكَ أَشْخُرَ كَثِيرًا He said, we have enough for plenty of months. And the imam says, أَخْرِجُهُ Let's take it out. He says, أَخْرِجُهُ وَبِعْهُ Take it out and sell it. Sell everything we have. He's teaching him something. He says, قَالَ قُلْتُ لَهُ وَلَيْسَ بِالْمَدِينَةِ طَعَامُ If you sell it, there's no food. So we sell it, we're going to be left with nothing. And then the Imam says, بِعْهُ فَلَمَّا بِعْتُهُ قَالَ أَشْتَرِي مَعَ النَّاسِ يَوْمًا بِيَوْمٍ Sell it. He says, after I sold it, the Imam said, now go and buy stars daily. Go now and live like this. You know, I was in one Middle Eastern country. <coughs> I was talking to someone that works for an official, a politician. I said to him, I challenge you. The guy you work for does not even know what a knife switch is. You wouldn't know because you live in Australia, unless you're an electrician. A knife switch in, our, in, in, in Lebanese, we call it hewis. I said to him, The knife switch, he wouldn't even know what it is. You wouldn't know, honestly, because you've never used it. They wouldn't even know what it looks. There's no electricity, they wouldn't even know. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam, who is the leader of the people, lives like the people. You're suffering, you can't get your daily bread, well neither can I. I'm with you, I sold everything and we start. Because you know some people have money but there's no food. And that's what happened. The Imam lived with the people, like the people. Inshallah, I'll leave the dua for after the majlis. <coughs> um, and pretty much, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Wa sallallahumma ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد A couple of minutes please close your eyes if you can to do qibla and then do ziyarat al baqi inshallah اللهم كل بني الحجة بن الحسن سلاماتك عليه اللهم كل وليك حجة ابن الحسن 
صلواتك عليه في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة وليا حافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توم وتمتعه فيها تبينا السلام عليكم أئمة الهدى السلام عليكم أهل التقوى السلام عليكم أيها الحجج على أهل الدنيا السلام عليكم أيها القوام في البرية بالقس السلام عليكم أهل السفا السلام عليكم آل رسول الله السلام عليكم أهل النجم أشهد أنكم قد بلغتم ونصحتم وصبرتم في ذات الله وكذبتم وأسيا إليكم فغفرتم وأشهد أنكم لأمة الراشدون المهتدون وأن طاعتكم مفروضة وأن قولكم السن وأنكم دعوتم فلم تجابوا وأمرتم فلم تطاعوا وأنكم دعائم الدين وأركان سلام من بمدينة بأستان رفيعش بمسجد نبوي بلالهم يبقي سلام من بعلي بحلم صبر عجيب سلام من ببقي يوم چهار قبر غریب نشست باز دلم پشت در به بزده آنجا گرفت باز دلم بهر قبر مخفی زهرو مظلوم آقا مظلوم آقا مادر میان که گیرد مرغ دلم بهانه هر وقت امام صادق دلش میگره صدا می کرد می گفت روزه مادرم رو بخون یا ابن لزم آجر گیرد بهانه تو با ذکر آشقانه مادر میان نظر کن که از باب خانه من 
از فتنه زمان آتش کشد زبان منصور اردر فایر امام صادق ریممبر دی دی آم دی فایر بی بی فاطمه منصور بهر جلبم مأمور می فرستن که از بهر بردن من آیم زبام Today is belong to Imam Sadiq, but I want to a little bit do rova about Bibi Fatima. And inshallah, the all patients that are in the hospitals or whoever remembering tonight, Khususan Nargis, Nargis Shirazi, Sakin Shirazi. Inshallah, we will pray and we do the all for all. Marza or patients, they are in the hospital, in the house, or wherever they are. Chan vaqti ist, saram ruye tanam mi ufta. دست من نیست یا ابن الحسن که گاهی بدنم می افتم چه بگویم که چه ها بر سر من آوردن پیش من در پس در مادر من را کشتم They fire the house of Bibi Fatima in front of Zainab and Abu Abdullah and Hassan ibn Ali. Pishman dar pas dar ma dar man na kujdan ya ibn al Hassan. ریسمال بزده به مسجد پدرم را برده منم استاده و این منظره را می دیدم ما تو حیرت زده می دیدم و می کاشکی زودتر این پیر و حل آماده شود بهر فردای حسینم که بن آماده شود بی بی جان زینب جان یو نبر اکسپیک دک گودال قتل گاف فی یوم کربلا فی یوم لاشورا یه وقت دید سکه این صدا میزنه اما این چه بدنیه داری صحبت میکنی این و اخی این و ابن و امی و سبجون السلام علیک یا جعفر ابن محمد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى النوم وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها إن دلهم إشفى لنا إن دلهم يا وجيها 
اسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم الهي بحرمة محمد وعترته الهي بحرمة مولا جعفر بن محمد بحرمة مولانا صاحب الزمان وبحرمة الشهداء وبدم المظلوم يا الله 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 يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اكفنا يا قاضي الحاجات يا كافي المهمات انك على كل شيء قدير ظهور الحجة اللهم عجل بليك الفرج والعافية والناس وهب لنا رأفته واقض حبائجه واكشف همه وغمه بظهوره واكشف همنا وغمنا بظهور الحجة برحمتك وبفضلك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم من غرى الفاتحة ما السلامات